call the act Straight off the launching pad Marching the Empire. on the moon, motherfucker I've been to Mars and back Soon as an argument Jumping in something from other countries Companies junkie, you cannot order that I flew there and took the water back Or the go to Iraq and get a car with gas And tell them crackers, what with that? All I need is an automatic Tick, boom, I'm a goon I go zoom, smell the fumes from the rooms Young tune in a room, give me room Are you doomed? I am soon to get all my chips in the blooms I will never be another groom unless I assume The bitch ain't giving up the womb To him in the room M.O.B. let me bloom, let me boom I pop early like five crackers in the last week of June I'm getting my lunch like noon I gotta eat skull face with diamond teeth uh, Okay, everybody I want y'all to go to uh, YouTube And search Die Hard No Space podcast uh subscribe like follow comment share do whatever man we trying to go viral uh otherwise you can go to my uh youtube my personal youtube page i got a sex tape out there all right so if y'all <laughs> if y'all niggas want to see something worse than than that motherfucking hey, it's, uh, it's a short, sex tape it's, it's a short film don't worry <laughs> <laughs> oh shit man uh yeah, uh, clean it up a little bit, shit, nigga. We ain't necessarily trying to go viral. We're just trying to provide you guys with some fantastic content weekly. Um, you know, we try to stay dropping every Monday. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Bring you that straight blue magic. But, yeah, definitely support your boys, man. And, uh, and you know, if you got other people out there you think might be interested in the content that we provide, please definitely share. Uh, pass the word along as we try to make this, you know what I'm saying, uh, grow out. Tell a friend. Yeah. All right, man. That's what she said. Yeah, straight up. Yeah. What you want to do, man? You want to get intelligent? You want to get ignorant? What you want to do, man? And shit, nigga. I need some old Tylenol 3s, nigga, and about 12 more hours of sleep, nigga, the way this back feeling. But shit, nigga. Uh, I can give him a leg up. Well, this week, man, there's been a lot of stuff going on. First off, there's too much music to be consumed right now. Like, three, four albums dropped yesterday. I got through one and a quarter uh so we'll discuss that in a minute. I wanted to do the cuffing season episode. We might have to save it for next week or whenever uh, we record again or whatever. We still uh, got two months till cuffing season drop in. This is the uh, interview stages for cuffing season. Yeah, but the, the weather changed real quick. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we're supposed to jump back up in the 80s next week. It's supposed to be 80 today, but like yeah. I said, you know, anything less than 90 uh, in Texas is, is fall. Exactly. <laughs> so, shit. Trust me, I'm walking around with a fucking bullet coat on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Week, nigga, that temperature drop. Motherfuckers looking at me like, oh, I feel good. To you, niggas. Nigga, I had on a windbreaker at work the other day. Nigga, I walk around the floor, I get off the elevator, all here is. But uh, anyway, man, uh, <coughs> but where you want to start at, man? What what crossed your timeline that caught your uh, I had think, your radar going off? I think, man, the real you probably gonna have to go right into Wayne, bro, because. Pause. Ooh, shit, uh, nigga, that 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 album that Lil Wayne dropped, the little news that came out with Birdman, nigga, that probably be the most uh, hottest shit that's popping on my radar right now. Cause I mean, you, I, I, I know you heard the recording, right? What recording? The, they got the recording where Birdman oh, where they said he the shot painting. up the truck. Yeah, when the nigga yeah, yeah. was telling him to come get his painting, you got to come to me to get your money type shit. Right. You know uh, what I'm saying that's probably like the hottest thing on my timeline right well, now. Well, if we know, if we heard about that, you, you think Wayne heard about it too, right? Well, the thing was uh, that tape was in the lawsuit. Right. So when he sued, that was part of his lawsuit. So how are you on stage kicking it with a nigga, got your arm around the nigga and shit, you know what I'm saying, a couple weeks ago, like two, three weeks ago. That's that's where show niggas that the game is real. Uh, when you fuck with a nigga so long, he probably got mixed emotions like, damn. Ain't no mixed emotion, my nigga. There is mixed emotions because there's still, uh, what's funny is that tape ain't going to be enough to convict a nigga because it's still, it's, there's a lot of speculation. I'm saying, if you put bullets in the air... And- Aiming at me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, or tell anybody that tell I, niggas we trust trying to send a warning. Yeah, like ain't no warning, my nigga. Bullets ain't got no names on them, my nigga. Like you exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, you got me fucked up. But salute to me because I called Lil Wayne the Tiger Woods of hip hop, and he quoted. You heard the audio when he announced it on the fucking uh, Instagram or whatever. He called himself. Tiger Woods. He said, y'all got me feeling like Tiger Woods on this comeback. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'll give you a salute for that, but I'll also give you, nigga, two flushes, nigga. No. For all your comments you've been making over the last couple months about this Carter 5, nigga, you was wrong. That hoe is not dated, nigga, at all. 
No, it's a brand new album. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying. So let's dive right in it. So let's dive right in it. What What are your on, thoughts on hold it? Hold on, sir. Uh, I'm not done trying to flush you, little turd. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your ass was wrong, nigga. You owe a little way to apology, nigga. There will be no apologies issued yeah, you, from Bruce Leroy. Nigga, to the whole. He said he got to feel like Tiger Wolf, uh, Tiger Woods with the comeback, but nigga. Matter of fact, I ain't gonna drop it. I'm like, I'm gonna I'm skirt away around that issue and just tell you, nigga. That little Wayne Jammer, though. That album worth it, though. Um, nigga brought the heat on that shit. He prevalent. That was a, I'm not gonna. He he about three songs short of being a classic. Uh, there was a mm. couple I had to skip on so there. So you wanted 25, 26 song? Oh, the the problem with me was there were a couple of those songs, like the. Uh, there was one song on there where he just literally said one thing like eight times, and that was eight bars. Right. Um, which kind of made me feel like he might have rushed that song and just used that feature uh, to carry it through. Uh, he definitely got ate up by Kendrick uh, on their little duo. Uh, I people Kend- said that, but I don't really think it was. No, I mean he had the better verse, but I don't think it was a competition type thing. It was a it was a concept. When did Wayne ever feature on somebody's shit and did not try to eat him up? That's what Wayne was known for. What did Kanye say? I know this is a song with uh, with uh, Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? But like, historically. Go- if Wayne gets on a track with high profile artists, he's always come up short. That's just a fact. Name something. Swagger like us, uh fucking Well T.I. took that. Exactly, but he's on the track well, with Wayne. Was on and that too. T.I. took T I took that. Exactly. Uh Forever. He was trash on that too. Yeah, Eminem took that. The two songs that he did with uh with Jay, terrible. I think he on the Billy the song, re- on the uh, Billy remix he won. He beat the, Jay on the on the remix. The B you trying to tell me on the Millie remix he didn't beat Jay up? I don't really remember that. This uh, when Jay was like to, instead of saying a Millie he was like a Billy a Billy. His I, verse I, I remember Trinidad. the concept, but I don't remember the song. Uh, Compared to Wayne that verse, that fucking Trinidad. Barry Bonds on that uh, Kanye graduation album, he was terrible on that hoe. Uh, the only song that he really co- tried to compete with niggas on that hoe was that fucking Drop the World with Eminem. That's the only song that he ever tried to actually rap with some skill on that hoe against. Define a high profile artist before I let me let you go. Bro, I just named no, Kanye, no, Wayne, Tip. You know what I'm saying? Like, these is all niggas that's. That's not even say a name. I said define a high profile artist. What's your definition of a high profile artist? A bigger artist that, you know. You're talking about money, like how much money they produce and how much You always talk about money. I'm talking about nigga, money too. notoriety, nigga. Yo, yo, uh. Your reputation and all of that, you know what I'm saying? Sales, right, so money, everything. Nigga. Okay, so he's a top tier artist. But he had the best verse of all those DJ Khaled hits. Nigga, we taking over all the motherfucking shit that uh, well, I'm so hood. He had everybody on that. That was a full of high profile artists, and he had the best track on all of them. Well, you talking about Trick Daddy, Plies, and Rick Ross at the time? Nigga, first off, Rick Ross is a spitter, bro. At the time, was Rick Ross? Rick Ross, them, nigga, Rick Rick Ross, Ross those songs are ten years old. Yeah, but I'm saying you said every track he got on with a high profile artist. So Rick Ross was spitting back then. Yeah, Rick Ross she been spitting. She twenty two. Magnum cost me twenty two. Rick Ross is on them twenty two. That shit is room two twenty two. That shit is catchy. Get the fuck catchy out of here, man. Nigga. But that's he's just spitting. like niggas who sleep on the spit. Do you know for a nigga who can rap, you know how hard it is to rhyme the word "hoe nigga" and have a song that's actually that takes fucking intelligence. You know what I'm saying? To actually bend them 22s like that, that that whole scheme that he did. That wasn't 22 twos. My nigga, nigga, he was that, just saying bro, 22. No, but what you don't understand, see, that's the reason why I, I try to educate young niggas, bro. You don't understand in rap, nigga. You either got similes that you're using or you scheming. That 22 was a scheme that he spread out, nigga. That shit was genius, bro. You know what I'm saying? That just shows fucking talent, nigga, is behind that whole scheme that he wrote with them 22s, my mm-hmm. nigga. You know what I'm saying? That shit was that shit was genius as fuck to me, nigga. That shit is hard to do. You know what I'm saying? That's why I be giving Luda a lot of props, nigga. Rhyme a whole, having a whole scheme, nigga, through fucking three bars, nigga, on a three minute track is hard as fuck. You can't compare. You know what I'm saying? You can't compare Ludacris and, and Rick Ross. Yeah, Rap Rick Ross is way harder. Rap wise, he's a better rapper than Ludacris. Nigga, he's better. He's got a way better pain. Nigga, Rick, nigga, Rick Ross can. You talking song wise? You talking lyrics? There's a Lyr- difference. Lyrics, nigga. Lyric wise, nigga. I have, I have, nigga, Rick Ross up there, nigga, in my top five, nigga. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to pen, nigga, this nigga can spit, bro. Do you know the other four off the head? As far as pen wise, yeah, but it's different. My my top is different. There's a lot of South artists in the, in my top five, bro. I get it, but I'm saying like you put Rick Ross in, Rick Ross probably wouldn't even be in my top ten of lyricists, nigga. From knowing you, I believe it. 
but I got highly respected pin dart throwers out there. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, but we, we've said this a lot of times, bro. Nigga, you was the most in the box thinking ass nigga I've ever met in my entire life, nigga. So I think I would I would be offended if we had the same top ten, cause then that would mean, nigga, I don't know how to think. So who, So give me so give me your top four then. Now my you piqued my interest now. So give me your give me the other four. That's a that's a conversation we have to go. Okay, with. okay, exactly. I, I don't want to jump into a top five, so, nigga. I'm still fine. trying to talk about this Wayne. That's fine. Back into the uh, Wayne. Give me your thoughts. Shit, it was better than I expected. Way better than I expected. Way, way that that was, and that's why I give the nigga more credibility because I thought, and you was right when you hit it. It's a new album. I thought this nigga was no, it's a new mix album. That's why so many songs because he probably took a good seventy percent of what was on the original Carter Five. He took all the dated shit out and dropped new shit. He knew what he was doing. Or, or updated verses. Updated, yeah, updated verses. You can tell some of these hooks that he ran out the old, because on the verses that were on the old shit, we had to write re new verses. That's the shit where he was doing these repeat rhymes um, that kind of threw a lot of people off. What I'll say is, like, it, it was way better than expected. Uh, and seeing as these are new verses, and I can tell they were some new verses, because you can tell the way the hooks and the verses were recorded, some of that shit wasn't all the way mastered. You know what I'm saying? Because volume levels were fucking different on some of the audios, and uh, and it, as he was waiting for features, etc., or whatever. Um, but anyways, man, I, 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 give, I give that nigga, you know what I'm saying, uh, out of five, I give a nigga three and a half mics. You know what I'm saying? Dead ass. Okay, I, so I take that. Uh, honestly, I was impressed with the uh, the fact that the album wasn't old, you know what I'm saying? It didn't sound dated. It uh, actually sounded good. However, I will say that after it being, I didn't realize that it had been six years, five, six years. It's been a minute. Yeah. Uh, it's been however, a long time. right. It's yeah. Been yeah. Uh, I did not think that this album. First, okay, I will say this. First, salute to him for giving us so much music to consume because motherfuckers been EPing us to death for the past, I don't know, few months. You know what I'm saying? Really, all year, niggas been dropping EP, EP, EP. You know what I'm saying? They want tour music. They want tour money. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the fact that he actually gave us. Shit, four EPs and one album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I salute him for that. Uh, it seemed like the closer, as close as we gonna get to old Wayne is back. It's very little auto tune. If I heard it, no, did not bear. I think only two songs he was actually singing on. There's no rock on that hoe, so I appreciate that. Uh, however, you could tell that he was going through some shit. On this album, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you talking about likewise? Yeah, because it was real slow pace. You know what I'm saying? Like I think it was only four, or maybe five up tempo beats on the hoe. He had a sad Zaytoven beat, bro. <laughs> Nick said sad Zaytoven. He had a sad Zaytoven beat, bro, and that was crazy. Like Zaytoven beats, you know Zaytoven, Gucci Mane, Jeezy, Future. You know what I'm saying? That whole ATL sound. You know what I'm saying? Trump music. He had a sad Zaytoven beat, bro. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's a damn good sounding album, bro. I like it. Like I said, three and a half, uh, three and a quarter, I would say, star, uh, or mics, whatever you want to say. Uh, standout, of course, is the Kendrick Lamar track, uh, the Swiss Beats track. Uh, however, like I said, salute to Philly Beard Trey, my partner from way back. That nigga cheated, because we was in the group talking about that hoe. It was the all the buzz yesterday online, up and down your timeline and all this. Yeah. This nigga cheated, bro. He said he was uh, catching a train on the way to work. And I was like, bro, that album don't sound sad to y'all when it first started off? Or whatever. He was like, no. Oh, because he started with the triple X. Well, shit, it was just that the first track is a skit. His mom was crying and shit. And I'm like, bro, this shit's sad as fuck. It's yeah. raining outside. I'm like, god damn. Man. I'm, you know what I'm saying? This nigga Trey hit shuffle play on this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Elmo started off sad. He hit the button and then some up tempo shit, shit came on. So I was like, nigga, fuck you, you cheating. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but you gotta, cause the, he didn't really cheat, he kinda robbed himself, cause that's a, there's a motion yeah, roller coaster. People, put, though, but people yeah. put the songs in order for a reason, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's the move. Motion, yeah, 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 it's setting it like a DJ right. with the set. Yeah. But like I said, you know, uh, so salute to my partner Six. You know, he was telling, he was like, bro, so what you telling me, you don't like, like, uh, mood music, perfect, you, your life is just so perfect, you can't relate to this shit? I was like, nah, that's not the point, but I'm saying, like, for Wayne to be one of the all-time greats, and he is, for him to be gone for so long, and for him to come back, and this is the mood that you want to set off on your album, he should have came out with a, a million, you know what I'm saying? He should have came out snapping on that hoe like he did in the quarter, too, you know what I'm saying? I felt like, go ahead. 
that, but that's what I'm saying, like snapping, let niggas know, hey, I'm back, and then go into your, you know what I'm saying, like the album set it for it to be set off. Your mama's crying on track one, and then track two, you featuring a dead man. Yeah, but, you know what no, saying? but it's not about the dead man. What was his mama saying on that intro? She was crying, talking about how much she loved him and how proud she is of him and all that's fine. But like I said, what a good game though. But you said his mom was crying, talking about how much he loved him, etc., etc. Right? Right. So then the next song, he's got a young rising star whose life was taken easily. His mom's very. But that's vocal. not the way good you said off your no, album. I know that's not a way, but that's why I say we both said it said uh, 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 like a, a musical. There's a difference between mixtapes and then what people do with albums. Albums are supposed to be like a mastered work piece of art. Right. Where mixtapes are raw. He took you on an emotional roller coaster. You know what I'm saying? He set it up, you know what I'm saying, by having in there, you know, the story his mom is talking about him as a kid growing up, all this other stuff and everything else. And then bam, they're dropping the triple X, triple X with the hook. And that further kind of expands that move from what you're talking about his mom. And then he starts to bring you back up on the next few tracks right. before it brings you down. I think it was masterful. You know what I'm saying? The way I mean, he like, it I get it. What you're saying is, uh, I mean, I couldn't, nobody could say it better in my opinion. But at the end of the day, like I said, for him to be gone for so long, and bring us back in that mind frame, in that mood. I felt like he did it wrong. Like he could have came out that whole snapping and then slowed it down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me. Because everybody know Wayne can spit. And this is probably one of his best lyrical albums, you know, uh, shit of the past decade. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't like Carter 4. Carter 3 was cool. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for a Millie, you know what I'm saying? Like, but at the end of the day, uh, like I said, this is probably one of his better lyrical albums. Did you hear the Free Weezy album no. a couple years ago? It's actually pretty good. Uh, but like I said, it's uh, this is probably his best lyrical album of the past decade. You know what I'm saying? But because the, the Free Weezy is the one that he dropped on title, right? I think I think it was. Okay, yeah, uh, no, I didn't hear it. It was actually it. pretty good though, actually. Uh, because my pirates didn't have it. Okay. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Nigga, yeah. nigga, that was back when it was hard to pirate that title shit. Now uh, nigga uh, get that shit just like everything else. Uh, nigga, shout out to my Sea Warriors, nigga, pirates. No, but uh, yeah. So like I said, bro, uh, Wayne did his thing on this album. You know what I'm saying? I like the album. However, like I said, the slow pace of it, it was like a J Cole album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And but that's just my opinion, you know. Uh, but salute to Wayne, man. He came back and did his yeah. thing, man. He threw his ring in the, uh, he threw his hat in the ring for the album of the year. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people was, uh, was talking about that. That Wayne is and back. I, and I'm about to say, in order to be, so this is me and you, not public opinion. This is me and you. Don't give a fuck what everybody else says on Twitter, timelines, what you say in your group chat. This is me and you talking. Right. Nigga, don't don't you feel like in order to be considered album of year, you have to drop before June, or is that bad thinking? No, because it, it don't because don't you, if your album it's all about four, impact. Okay, I get that, but let's say if I drop an album, we're in September. It really only has three months to breathe. Right. You get what I'm saying? But, but you let's go, say if somebody drops an album prior on the first half of the year, and it and it, and it gets a full six months, seven months to breathe, and it's still audible content because if you drop music that's uh non recyclable it means like you listen like like the a lot of people with the uh uh, uh the, the second Kendrick album listen to it once and then they never it had no repeatable value no you know replayable value you so talking about the pimple butterfly yeah the pimple butterfly okay. so I'm saying like with this Wayne it's gonna be hot and buzzing for a couple months because it's Wayne because people are gonna listen to it one time and then other people are gonna start talking about songs that they probably never paid attention to right. and so all of that runs about the first three months of the album so after that three month period now it's on people on their own whether or not this really has something to go back and play or whether this really that's where you can really define a classic once the buzz is gone from a, an album you know right. what I'm saying if people start talking about it I just personally feel that if you want to be considered an album of the year it's my personal feeling you know what I'm saying outside of whatever the great minds say you need to drop before the first six months a year because I think an album needs six months to breathe well, to then, really feel whether it's great or not well if you want to qualify uh, that well, then you can say Jay-Z never had an album of the year because he always dropped third quarter you know what I'm saying yeah fourth quarter I should say but it doesn't mean he can't have every other year for his like album Mike, be Mike Jordan. No, I, I got you, but I'm saying um, it doesn't mean he couldn't have an album of the year. It just means he couldn't have an album of the year he dropped in. Let's say if he dropped something fourth quarter of 2018, you know so what I'm you're, saying? You're speaking of the calendar year. Yeah, calendar year. I'm saying, yeah, calendar year. Because I'm saying a project needs at least six months to breathe. So if I drop an album in October of 2018, it shouldn't even be fully been able to break it down. 
You know what I'm saying? Until 2019, till probably about March of 2019. Great, but just because I'm listening to it in March 2019 doesn't mean it wasn't the album of the year in 2018. As long as it came out in 2018, I think it could be qualified as the album of the year because oh, 2018 of 2018. Because what if I drop an album in December? And then there, J. Cole did that with Forest Hills Drive. And it was album of the year of that same year? Yeah. That's fucking retarded, bro. There's no way you could break an album down that fast with as much content. But it was the best out. album of that year, though. Yeah, but in, and then when you're talking about real lyrical people, bro, I had to listen to that Kamikaze, bro. I listened to that Kamikaze six times before I think I got all the concepts. And there's still a bunch of schemes in there that I'm not broke down yet. And that Kamikaze been out how long? A month. A month, so I'm still eating it, plus I'm eating new shit. So I gotta come back. Because niggas don't understand, there's no way possible that a motherfucker can get every scheme on a, on a 14 track album on one hearing. It's impossible. Yeah, but you gotta think, like, your method of listening to music isn't how everybody listens to music anymore. People might consume the album once or twice as a whole, and then after that, you're listening to the songs that stood out to you. Not everybody's listening to the album six times, you know what I'm saying, to, to catch everything. Because it's a microwave era that we're in. Yeah. People are just listening to what they want to listen to now. That's why people are doing streams and single deals and all of that. You know what I'm saying? They're not listening to the whole album. They're listening to what stood out to them. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, they, and they're making they, playlists and they're doing all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So That's why I consider my fucking casual ass rap fans, nigga. Because if you're not... Nigga, anybody can just rhyme, nigga. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If you're not listening for the schemes and see the way niggas put together similes and they metaphor, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Like, like you said, the to casual it. fan is not listening. They don't care nothing about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, nigga, them the niggas that studio albums are for anyways, the casual ass fans, nigga, because they need to be controlled like sheep, nigga. Right. Keep dropping mixtapes, nigga. Come on. <laughs> right. Give me the heat, nigga. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, salute to Wayne, man. He's doing his thing, man. He came back with a vengeance, man. And, uh, I'm proud of him, man. I'm happy for him. He, first off, he got his freedom, you know what I'm saying? He got uh, he can do whatever he wanted. He's probably going to come back real, you know, probably maybe spring next year, if, you know, like I said, because he has to have, if he kept the same work ethic that he's always had, which I probably do believe, he's probably got a shitload of songs. He can drop mixtapes, he can drop albums, he can do whatever the fuck he wants to do now, you know what I'm saying? What, one thing I will give you props for, though, out of all your Wayne hate, is it this nigga? There's no hate. I'm honest, bro. I am honest, dog. <laughs> I am honest, bro. All your fucking Wayne hate, bro. Hey, look, bro. This is the one thing I'm Wayne gonna is in my top 10, bro. He's in my top 10. He's like 6 through 10. Uh, get you with these 6 through 10 niggas. He's like one of 6 through 10. He's somewhere in there, bro. I'm going to make a list one day. I got 20 niggas in your 6 through 10. I said 10, nigga. What is he talking about? <laughs> hey, okay, look, sir, bro. What? One little uh, hate dropper that you drop, bro. Bro, Wayne gotta get off those fucking drugs, though. That's the one thing I will tell. I can tell, because nigga, Wayne used to come in freestyling. His, Wayne's never been a schemer, but he's been heavy on similes and metaphors. Punch That's, line. Yeah, because somewhere mid, uh, I'd probably say about quarter two, quarter three, where he really started with punchlines kind of real heavy. Right. And that kind of became the thing throughout. You know, he pushed it to cash money, etc. Um but yeah, punchlines, you send me these punchlines, whatever, whichever way you want to do. But he's never been a scheme with like a fabulous or something like that where he does a four bar scheme setup. Right. But, um, you know, ends with a nice punch. But what's it called? Uh, fabulous is my top two. Uh, anyway, so he. <laughs> that nigga fab spits. No, it's fine. He does spit, nigga. I told you that nigga's got some of the best setups, nigga. His bar setups are nasty, but it, it takes him four bars to get a setup. You can see when it's coming, because he'll take a whole first half of a rhyme just to set up his punch at the end. That's a different conversation, though. But uh, real nigga shit, though, what I will say about Wayne, though, is the nigga need to let the drugs off, because you can hear them where them drugs are affecting. Because you can see where he was trying to go and didn't have the mental aptitude to take it there. And then it just kind of falls off short on some of his lines. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you can uh, definitely tell that shit is induced on some of the shit he fucking with. But you can hear, uh, like, okay, he like Mona Lisa. Brain damage. Like, Mo <laughs> no. like Mona Lisa. You don't think, well, you know you've been having seasons. That's shit, what I'm saying. So, you don't think when yeah. niggas have seasons, they get brain damage? Yeah, 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 that shit yeah, permanent. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, like, on Mona Lisa, he had to be sober doing that with Kendrick. And the concept that they put together, like Kendrick went to war. That's what I'm saying. Like you couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like that bit. No, stopped. he went to war too, though. He knew he was on the track. Yeah, he did. He went to war. That's why I was like, Yo, Wayne still got it. Yeah, yeah. Like, he he did it. But like I said, when that bit stopped, and I was like, I thought that whole had Kendrick, so I picked it up, and I was like, Never mind. Yeah, I was like, Oh shit. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, cause that whole pause for a good four seconds. I was like, oh shit, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, like I said, he had to be sober doing some shit like that. Uh, salute to one of my, fr- well, I ain't gonna say her name. One of my Facebook friends, he hit me up. It was like, man, you gotta lay off my girl Nikki. But I need to hit her up. It was like, what the fuck was that? Who menages? Yeah, like, come on, man. You supposed to be the baddest bitch in the game and all this. And you come on Wayne, highly anticipated album, and you sing it. Like, don't nobody want to hear that shit. 